Good morning, everybody. My name is Kenjin Kawata. I am a bishop of the Higashongan Mission of Hawaii. Uh, thank you for attending uh, this uh, HBC Body Day service. My name is Eric Matsumoto, Bishop of the Hompahonganji Mission of Hawaii. Aloha kako, and welcome to our annual Body Day service. Good morning. Welcome to our HBC Body Day service. My name is Kosen Ishikawa. I'm Bishop of Jodo Mission of Hawaii. Thank you very much for joining us. Aloha. My name is Shokai Kanai, Bishop of Mission Mission of Hawaii. Happy Body Day. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Good morning, everyone. I am Reverend Clark Watanabe, Bishop of the Koyasan Shingo Mission of Hawaii. Thank you for joining us on this for the HBC Body Day service. Um, I hope you enjoy this service today. Thank you very much. This is Bishop Shugen Komagata of Soto Mission of Hawaii. I would like to thank you, everyone, for coming, joining uh, this annual Body Day service. Good morning and aloha. Uh, welcome to Higashi Honganji Hawaii Betsuing in beautiful downtown Liliha for the 2020 Hawaii Buddhist Council Bodhi Day service. Thank you for joining us today for the Bodhi Day service commemorating Shakyamuni Buddha's enlightenment. Uh, today's service is co-hosted by Higashi Honganji Mission of Hawaii and Hompa Honganji Mission of Hawaii in participation with the other Hawaii Buddhist Council uh, members, Jodo Mission of Hawaii, Koyasan Shingon Mission of Hawaii, Nichiren Mission of Hawaii, Soto Mission of Hawaii, and Tendai Mission of Hawaii. Although we're not together to share this service, we hope you enjoy today's service. Namo dasa bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhasa Homage to him, 
the exalted one, the enlightened one, the supremely awakened one. Buddham Saranam Gachami I go to the Buddha for guidance. Dhammam Saranam Gachami I go to the Dharma for guidance. Sangam Saranam Gachami I go to the Sangha for guidance.
Show back aspiration. May the infinite light of wisdom and compassion so shine within us that error and vanity of self may be dispelled. So shall we understand the changing of nature of the existence and awaken into the spiritual peace. Today we are gathered here to observe Hawaii Buddhist Council's Body Day service, which is the day of Buddha's awakening. In this occasion, we show our deep respect to Shakyamuni Buddha's great effort and endurance for his awakening. We also express our sincere gratitude to his burst compassion that embrace entire universe. Today we remember his great impression of attainment of the awakening which shaken whole world and it's still continuously shaking our heart and body. May we take this opportunity to reflect on Buddha Dharma for a meaningful and peaceful life and to come to appreciate our own lives and live together in the spiritual of the true gratitude. Let us be reminded that our effort to understand the teaching of the Buddha must be never ending. On this occasion, may we reconfirm our commitment to listen ever more diligently to the teaching of Buddha and other masters of the Buddhism. December 6, 2020, respectfully in Gashio, Shaku Kenjun, Uyamate Mosu.
On behalf of the Hawaii Buddhist Council, and especially the Higashi Honganji Mission of Hawaii and Hopa Honganji Mission of Hawaii, the Tobang denominations for this year, as current president of the council, I'd like to welcome everyone to our annual Bodhi Day service. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we're not able to physically gather to observe Bodhi Day, but be that as it may, let it not stop us from expressing our joy and gratitude for the Buddha's teaching, sharing us with paths to enlightenment. We just have to do it differently this year. The biggest factor which will make this a meaningful celebration is not the physical setting, but each of our own hearts and minds and its engagement with the Buddha Dharma. As part of my welcome message, I would like to humbly, but with great emphasis, ask each of you to ask your family members and friends to view this Bodhi Day service, or at minimum our guest speaker's message, as it will be available on the Hawaii Buddhist Council YouTube channel for viewing. As it says in the teaching of Buddha, published by VDK, each individual, quote, should, as far as they are able, help others especially their relatives and friends, trying to awaken in them an unshakable faith in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, so that they too may share in Buddha's compassion." The silver lining of COVID-19 is that it has forced us to utilize social media and platforms like YouTube, and because of it, we're able to reach new audiences. So please, I ask that you invite your family friends, and neighbors to view this Bodhi Day service on YouTube so that the wisdom, compassion, and the joy of enlightenment can become a part of their lives to guide and inspire them too, especially in this challenging time of divisiveness and confusion, major devastation and destruction by natural disasters, and illness and death from the pandemic are taking their toll on our nation and world. Before I introduce our guest speaker, please allow me to express a word of thanks to the Bodhi Day Service Planning Committee, chaired by Reverend Kazunori Takahashi and other committee members, Bishop Koseng Ishikawa, Reverend Stephen Toyoshima, Reverend Akiko Okada, and Derek Idoi. Thank you, committee members. And now to introduce our featured speaker. Our speaker for today is Reverend Dr. Kenneth Kenshin Tanaka, Professor Emeritus of Musashino University in Tokyo, Japan. He was born in Yamaguchi and moved with his family when he was 10 to Silicon Valley, California, where he attended public school and went on to receive a BA from Stanford University, a master's degree from the Institute of Buddhist Studies in Berkeley and Tokyo University, and a doctorate from the University of California at Berkeley. He also spent time at a Buddhist temple in Thailand, experiencing monastic life. Later, he was ordained as a Buddhist minister of the Jodo Shinshu Hongganji denomination, serving for three years as a Jodo Shinshu minister in California, before he moved to Japan to teach at Musashino University for 20 years before retiring. He is currently active in Bukyo Dendo Kyokai or the Society for the Promotion of Buddhism in Translation Work. In 2017, he was the recipient of the 27th Nakamura Hajime Eastern Study Prize, awarded to scholars who distinguish themselves in the field of Indian and Buddhist studies. He has appeared in TV shows, including NHK, and has written many books, some of which has been translated into Japanese, Chinese, and Portuguese. His most recent book, just published this year, is titled Jewels, an Introduction to American Buddhism for Youth, Scouts, and the Young at Heart, with a bit of humor. Now, without further ado, our featured Bodhi Day speaker, Reverend Dr. Kenneth Kenshin Tanaka. Good morning, uh, everyone. A happy Bodhi Day to all of you. Uh, on this occasion of the Bodhi Day service, uh, I'm very privileged to be able to uh, offer uh, this Dharma talk uh, 
uh, on this occasion. Uh, Bodhi Day, as you know, and needless to say, is, the, is to celebrate the most important day for Buddhism, actually. Um, uh, it is to celebrate the enlightenment or awakening of Shakyamuni Buddha, uh, whose experience uh, uh, impacted and empowered so many people uh, during his days and throughout the centuries for almost 26 centuries. So, uh, you know, on this occasion, I wish to give a Dharma talk entitled Three Cultivations, Three Cultivations in Facing Up to Our Difficulties, such as the Pandemic. And so, uh, in Buddhism, the three cultivations or three learnings um, are, um, are, are central, I believe, in how we Buddhists act. And as I do so, I want to begin with a very important principle that I think goes to the heart of Buddhism. That is that difficulties are inevitable, but suffering is optional. Once again, difficulties are inevitable, but suffering is optional. So here we see the difficulties and suffering are not the same. Uh, for Shakyamuni Buddha, for the Buddha, he had, of course, difficulties, but he didn't have as much suffering as most people do. That's because he was enlightened. So I often use this analogy or this scheme of horizontal and the vertical axes. The horizontal represents what happens to us uh, in our daily lives, in our work and school, etc. But the vertical is the the Buddha Dharma, the teachings of the Buddha, uh, or our walking the path, the Buddhist path. And so difficulties happen on the horizontal level. You know, difficulties such as, uh, you know, getting ill and this pandemic, uh, it's beyond our control. It just, it happens to us. But how we react is the most important thing, especially for us Buddhists. Uh, for anybody actually. So Buddhism gives us the wherewithal, the strength and the insight to deal with the ups and downs of, of life, including the pandemic. So we have to strengthen the vertical and that is, the, that is at the heart of the Buddhist teachings. And there are many teachings as you know, Four Noble Truths, Four Marks of Existence, but the, in terms of practice, and the total package, I think uh, three cultivations or three learnings uh, constitute a, 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 a good framework for us. So what are the three cultivations? In Japanese, it's sangaku. And the, so they are conduct, kai, settled mind, jo, and wisdom, e. Uh, in Sanskrit, it would be shila, conduct, Samadhi, settled mind, and prajna, wisdom. And so I want, and, and uh, the monks and nuns and, and lay Buddhists essentially are, are practicing these three as a cultivation. So one thing I also wanted to say is that Buddhism is a religion of awareness, awakening, or enlightenment, and not a religion of belief. It's not just believing in your mind what is true, that there is God and, and etc. But it's uh, not, not so much belief, but how we cultivate and change the way we look at life and our existence. And so the first, I, I said conduct, settled mind and wisdom, but I wish to begin with wisdom because that, is, uh, that determines how we look at things. And doing so, um, I, I often use the, the teachings, the teaching called the four marks uh, or four seals, which the Buddhists considered to be uniquely or distinctively Buddhist. And so when people were, Buddhists were asked, well, what is your teaching about? And they posited uh, uh, these four marks. 
And I'm using, uh, and I have been using these terms for many years. And for those who have read my book, Ocean, um, an introduction to Jodo Shinshi Buddhism in America, um, I have it in there. And in my more, most recent book called Jewels, uh, I also uh, feature that. The four marks are uh, to, to look at life in these four ways. Life is a bumpy road. Life is not a smooth road. Life is interdependent. Life should not be mine. Life is impermanent. Life should always be. Uh, okay, let, let me, uh, I've been, I, I, I added too much. So once again, life is a bumpy road. Life is interdependent. Life is impermanent. Life can be great. These are the four marks. And uh, you, using a very um, a more uh, 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 everyday word. So I take the, the acronym, acronyms of bumpy road, interdependent, impermanent, and great. And you get big. So it kind of humorously, I say, think big and don't think small. Small is the opposite. That is to say, life should go smoothly. Life should be mine. Life should always be the same, especially when things are going good. And life is lousy. If you take the acronyms of that, it's small, S-M-A-L. So think big, So and don't think small, if you want to be happy. So let's take each of these um, uh, four uh, marks and apply it to uh, the, the pandemic that we're all facing. By the way, I want to express uh, my, uh, my thoughts uh, to those who are in a dire situation uh, because of the pandemic. Some have lost their jobs, are not able to pay their rent, not, not enough to eat. And of course, there have been so many people who have passed on, uh, falling victim to uh, this, uh, this, this virus. And um, so uh, not everyone is experiencing this pandemic in the same way. And so I realize uh, as I talk um, that I am only speaking from my point of view in many ways because I am, you know, um, more fortunate um, in that um, uh, I have not been subject to uh, those situations. Uh, so at any rate, bumpy road. So uh, the first of the, the insights, bumpy road, seeing things as they really are. And not, not to say, why is this happening to us? It shouldn't be this way. Life should go smoothly. But the first mark says life is a bumpy road, up and down, and we are facing one of these downward situation. And um, so, and we have to see things not as how we want it, um, but how things really are. And in this sense, we should listen to the, the, the scientists, the experts who know. The reason why the East Asian countries are doing so well is that is because the people in those countries, including Japan, where I live now, that people um, respect what the experts have to say, unlike the situation that uh, you see in the United States. So uh, seeing reality, listening to the experts. Second is interdependent. The pandemic has shown us that the world really is interdependent. Obviously, it emanated the uh, the disease, the, the the virus started in China and impacted the entire world. But as we get the vaccines, we should also not forget the vulnerable, those uh, in the poorer countries who may not get the vaccine. If you were to say, well, you know, uh, they don't need it, they live far away, but um, if they continue to have the virus, it's gonna continue to be uh, present in the rest of the world because we are very much interconnected. And so um, we should uh, not only in terms of um, the, the teaching of interdependence, really um, 
uh, encourages us to really think of the others because if they are if they are not happy, then we will not be happy, and that is fundamental to the way we look at the world. Um, just because I'm happy, that is that is not enough. Uh, the position is that because of the interconnectedness that. Uh, uh, as many people as possible are happy, then I too will become more happy. Uh, the teaching of impermanence. So we did life is a bumpy road, life interdependent. This impermanent, uh, the third of the, of the four marks is that everything changes. And as when the pandemic hit us in uh, February, March of this year, um, we thought, why is this happening to us? It shouldn't be this way. You know, life should go always be the same, especially when things are going well. Well, that is the that is the what Buddhism has always been saying. Uh, things change, and often uh, change uh, uh, changes are not what we like. But on the other hand, change is coming too because everything changes. The situation is not so good now, but because of change. Uh, things will change. The pandemic situation will change, and uh, eventually, uh, we will. Uh, this will 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 go away. Um, hopefully, uh, next year, and it looks like it will if the vaccines begin to work and people begin to cooperate. So, change um, can we can have the teaching of change can give us hope that things will get better because nothing stays the same. Finally, life can be great, uh, is that uh, actually, even in, within, in the pandemic, for many of us, I think we have found silver linings. Uh, for example, um, you know, we, uh, for example, uh, the, the, the environment, the, the air became cleaner because people are not, uh, are not as active. They're not as, they're not flying. Uh, of course, you know, for the tourist industry, especially in Hawaii, it's been devastating. Uh, but there are the positive sides too. And many of us uh, have um, uh, been doing things that uh, we did not, we were not able to do before because we're so busy traveling and being so active. But for me, I have been able to do things like doing translations and writings that I, it was, which were not possible. Um, and then I've been able to uh, rest, uh, be more physically uh, restful in that I don't have to travel so much. And, and we have discovered Zoom and online conference like this. In fact, recently I was asked to give a, give a talk uh, by Indian Buddhists. So uh, I, was, uh, I did a, a, a four part lecture series to our friends in uh, India. So these are the the, so the Buddhist teaching, the four marks, the, this is the wisdom, wisdom part. If we can see things, uh, life is a bumpy road, life is interdependent, life is impermanent, life can be great. That constitutes one of the three cultivations, uh, uh, wisdom. Second is the settled mind. Buddhism, unlike other, te other religions, emphasizes the a settled mind more uh, to a greater degree than other religions. And so and, uh, that, that is why we have the uh, second one, the settled mind of meditation, the samadhi. Um, and um, even for uh, lay Buddhists like us, there are ways to settle our mind so that we can see things clearly so that the wisdom will be able to, uh, to be... Uh, to become more clear. Uh, and so meditation, nembutsu, uh, re recitation, the recitation of nammyo myoho renge kyo uh, uh, different practices of uh, various traditions, uh, they all have some form, way of settling the mind. On a more uh, secular level, um, uh, I think it might be good to, you know, um, learn how to, uh, li to settle the mind through exercising, taking walks, uh, listening to music that you like. Um, 
in this kind of confusing, uh, difficult time, uh, we can do all things like them to, to settle our mind. I take walks every day now uh, through the parks and have discovered things that I had never discovered, you know, uh, because, um, uh, you know, we are kind of called upon to, to be more settled. And the other thing is not to watch too much news, you know. I love CNN. Uh, that's the only uh, channel, uh, cable channel that we can get in, in Japan, or at least um, through my pro, through my uh, uh, contract. And, uh, but, you know, even CNN, it's uh, often news has to do with bad events or a negative. And so uh, listening to that too much can heighten our anxiety, fears, and uh, heighten our fears and anxiety. So, you know, don't go uh, middle path, not to watch too much news because it agitates the mind. And uh, so uh, conduct is the last of the three cultivations. We had wisdom, settled mind, and now conduct. So based on the above two, uh, we act. And conduct uh, in Buddhism, um, you know, how we think, uh, how we, what we say, and how we act. And these are the three actions, karmic actions. So um, again, it's not only believing because Buddhism is not a religion of belief, but it's, it's a religion of awakening, awakening to what is true. So that is the fundamental difference between the more the Abrahamic uh, or the monotheic, monotheic uh, religions. So uh, back to conduct, um, I want to share two uh, quotations that we in the Jodo Shinshu tradition recite often. And the first one is the golden chain, which by the way, was created in Hawaii, probably in the 1920s and 30s, uh, by Reverend Dorothy Hunt. And it is one uh, citation that is so popular and probably defines what uh, Joro Shinshu is, uh, at least in, in, in the United States. And this uh, encapsulates the, what conduct is. So it goes like, just the, I, I would recite um, one section of it. I will try to think pure and beautiful thoughts, to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds, knowing that on what I do now depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but uh, that of others. So isn't that beautiful? So uh, pure and beautiful thoughts, what we think, pure and beautiful words, what we say, and how we act uh, bodily. So, and we do this uh, in the context of the wisdom and the settled mind that I spoke about earlier. And the last one, which was uh, uh, recently uh, uh, promoted, uh, proposed by the His Eminence Otani Kojin, the Monshu, the head of the Nishi Honganji branch of Yoro Shinshu. And this is uh, not so sectarian. It, it, it applies to all Buddhism. So one part of that, what he calls the pledge, it goes like this, not becoming lost in my greed, anger, and ignorance, I shall think and act with an open mind, just like the calm and peaceful Buddha. So here, uh, greed, anger, ignorance, I know that the pandemic uh, can make us anxious and sometimes get angry, but uh, if we follow the three cultivations, as I have discussed, we should be able to have an open mind, find new things, and to do things that we're not able to. So uh, take this difficulty and change it into something that is more positive. And that is up to us because uh, we cannot often deal with what happens on the horizontal. Difficulties happen but we can surely make sure that we will not suffer um, because our, our vertical axis is positive.
because of our, um, our appreciation and practice of the three cultivations. So let us keep those, what I have just discussed in mind as we celebrate the Bodhi Day uh, of the founder of our religion, Buddhism, Shakyamuni Buddha. I close with our Gasho. Namo. As we conclude 2020 HBC virtual body day service, I'd like to pause a moment to thank Shakyamuni Buddha and his teaching that have been passed here in Hawaii beyond time and place. I'd like to thank Shakyamuni Buddha for showing to us the way of enlightenment. We will endeavor to walk in his holy path every day of our lives. I'd like to conclude this service with Jod. Benediction. Amida Buddha surrounds all men and all forms of life with infinite love and compassion. Particularly does he set forth loving thoughts to those in suffering and sorrow, to those in doubt and ignorance, to those who are striving to attain truth, and to those whose feet are standing close to the great change called death. Amida Buddha sends forth oceans of wisdom, mercy, and love. Namu Amida Buddha. Namu Amida Buddha. Namu Amida On behalf of the Hawaii Buddhist Council members, uh, thank you for joining today's Bodhi Day service uh, virtually on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, please give it a thumbs up and write a comment if you wish. And if you'd like to donate online, you may visit the Hawaii Buddhist Council's PayPal donation page. Mahalo, thank you, stay safe, and aloha. Thank you for attending this uh, HBC uh, Body Day service. Uh, please stay safe and then happy new year. Thank you. From the Hongpa Honganji Mission of Hawaii, thank you to one and all for joining us for our Hawaii Buddhist Council Body Day service. And may you have a meaningful and happy new year. Thank you very much for participating in this uh, Zoom uh, uh, body day service. This is the first try and how to uh, adjust uh, anyway, a new uh, uh, way of uh, propagation. And I wish you happy new year. See you next year. I hope you all have a, a nice, uh, beautiful, uh, safe, New Year, even though this is a very difficult time uh, of COVID-19, please uh, be careful and be safe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your participation in our virtual Body Day service. Please stay safe and happy Body Day. Mahalo. Hi. Thank you for joining us on this virtual body day service. I hope all of you have a happy, safe and healthy new year. Thank you very much. <laughs>